Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I've got another interview for you. I've got Raul here from uh, Connect to talk about his project uh, Escalate, where they're uh, working on scaling Ethereum DAPs. So you want to say hello to everybody, Raul? Hey everyone, good to be here. Thanks, yeah. Greg. Yeah, of course. Pleasure to have you on, Raul. I'm super excited to talk about this. Uh, you know, scaling is a huge uh, issue, or not I issue. Scaling is a huge challenge that we're trying to overcome right now in the Ethereum community, and you know, as DApp developers. And um, super excited to hear what you all are working on. And uh, before I kind of jump into any like really focused questions, do you want to kind of just? Uh, Give us your elevator pitch for Escalate and, you know, maybe what you're doing at Connext. You know, at Connext, we initially set out to solve some issues around UX and payments and onboarding mainstream consumers for decentralized applications with tokens. And what we found is that people are actually having more issues with scaling and transaction times and gas costs and these kinds of fees that are actually blocking them from getting to the mainstream market. So what we decided to do is, is set out to solve some of these scaling issues. And what we found is that it's extremely difficult to actually integrate stake channels into your DAP. So we're tackling that issue and making a very easy package, kind of containerized state channel solution that anybody can just go and plug in like they would plug in a normal like NPM module and instantly have state channels within their DAP. Nice. Very cool. So you want to explain uh, maybe what a state channel is and how you can integrate that with an Ethereum dApp? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'd love to. That's that's kind of really important, I think, to get some background on what state channels are. So normally in Ethereum, when you make a transaction, like let's say CryptoKitties, for example, you know, because that's, that's something that basically clogged up the whole network. So every time you do anything with your CryptoKitty, whether you like breed it, buy it, sell it, anything is a separate on-chain transaction. So each of these transactions has to go up to the blockchain, confirm, pay gas, pay miners, wait for the confirmation, all that stuff before anything else can happen. So your app is kind of like locked up, spinning there for like, you know, whatever, 15 seconds for the confirmation time. You're like spending $3 per transaction or whatever the crazy fees were at that time. Um, so what a state channel does is it's something where you and another party can both put a deposit of funds on an on-chain transaction then you guys exchange messages back and forth with each other that are signed and these messages are signed. So anytime anybody can close out the channel with the last signed message. So it's a way for you to con conduct transactions off chain that's ultimately verifiable on chain. So everything happens off chain and the blockchain is only used for the settlement. So, you know, I think that's that's kind of a really big concept that a lot of like dApps haven't really wrapped their head around yet because they think blockchain means blockchain, you have to use it for everything. But really, you only need to use the blockchain for kind of like a trustless verification at the end. So that's that's kind of what a state channel is in a nutshell. Cool. So if I were a blockchain developer or an Ethereum developer and I wanted to, you know, integrate a state channel into my dApp with, uh, you know, maybe something like Escalate, like how, how would I do that? Like what would be an example of a state channel and how would I plug it in? Yeah, so I think first of all, it'd be better to kind of talk about how you do it without Escalate. Sure. So if you didn't have Escalate, what you'd have to do is you would first of all have to write a whole like state channel opening contract. So that allows you to open and close the channel and join the channel between two parties. So that's like a whole kind of solidity work that you have to like work to deploy and everything like that. Then you need a bunch of off chain infrastructure to actually handle the passing of the messages back and forth. So I think that's where a lot of people are getting really hung up is because a lot of these dApps kind of don't really want to do things off chain. They think off chain equals like centralized and, you know, that it kind of has all these like sort of bad vibes, I would say. Mm -hmm. So people really haven't figured out good ways to kind of implement that. So that's kind of where we're trying to come in. And really, so we have the on chain infrastructure set up. We're going to have like a fully audited like state channel set up sort of hub channel manager hub. And then we are going to basically deploy an off-chain like off-chain hub that allows signed messages to easily be transferred back and forth. So we take care of the whole like signing process of the, the state, pass it back and forth to the other party. And this is all kind of like done through us in our hub. 
but it still is trustless in the sense that the messages are signed and we can't do anything to the message. So you can just take take the messages and verify for yourself that they're signed by both parties, take them to the blockchain and verify them yourself. So really we're just kind of providing a service on top of an already trustless environment that makes it easier to implement, easier to develop, and easier to ultimately get your dApp scaling. Sure, that's awesome. That was a great explanation, thanks for that. So, let's see, I've got a few questions here that I'd like to jump into. Um, so tell me about your particular involvement with the project. Yeah, so I'm one of the co-founders of Connext, and I'm the CTO. So I'm heavily involved on the technical side, you know, as well as you know, being a co-founder, you you end up wearing a bunch of different hats. So involved in basically all aspects of the company. We we're a three-person team right now, so we're all work, working very closely. And um, yeah, we're just kind of really excited to get going on this. And you know, we've been talking to a lot of different people right now, so we're really ready to start pushing this out quick. Yeah, very cool. So what are the other uh, roles and responsibilities on your team? You said you have a, a three-person team. What are the other uh, members doing? So he's, you know, he's really focused on kind of like business development, kind of like validation, uh, kind of like keeping like the high-level overview of like where we're going and the, the company vision very in line. So he's great at that. And then we have Lane, who she's focused on operations. So She's doing a great job of like managing everything, managing our like customer pipelines, managing our outreach. You know, she's, but we're all kind of technical and we're, we're a technical team. So like when we need to jump in and code, we can all just sit there and like code together. Like probably what we're going to do for the rest of the day to day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It sounds like a, a close knit family. Yeah, totally is. It's that, that Bay Area startup culture. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. So what's uh, what's your monetization model for something like this? Yeah, so I was kind of explaining like the off-chain infrastructure that we're kind of going to set up that we're going to monetize based on like a per transaction, kind of like AWS. You know, you'll have like a free tier of a certain amount of transactions per month and then volume based past that we'll have packages where you can do more transactions on our like off-chain hub. So essentially it becomes like you know, like a very cheap version of the Ethereum network where you're using our hub to send transactions between users and between dApps and users and things like that, that you pay per use. But it would be like fractional of the cost of actually doing it on chain. Sure. Very cool. So how did you get into blockchain? Um, so kind of like early last year, I got into Ethereum, I just got kind of like really interested in the kind of like development aspects of Ethereum. Like it was kind of like before the price blew up and there was all this like speculative kind of influx into it. So I kind of like right on the cusp of that, I don't know if it was like a weird coincidental timing, but like I was like, wow, this this looks really cool. Like I want to kind of learn what it's about because I'd just left my last startup gig and I was kind of in between jobs. So I decided to explore this. I started to learn a bunch about Ethereum development, Solidity, smart contracts. I actually did the status hackathon and our team ended up winning one of the prizes. So that was super cool and that kind of just like jumped me into the world. I started attending meetups and you know, through the SF Ethereum developer meetup community, actually that's how I ended up meeting my team and you know, we gelled a lot and then that's kind of how we just picked up and started this project together. Cool, that's great. So, what do you think? Um, what do you think the future of Ethereum and and DApps are? Um, so, I think that we're gonna definitely get to a point where some of these DApps are gonna start uh, like providing real world value to mainstream consumers, and that's really like you know that was the ultimate vision of Connects from the very start was to get the mainstream consumers involved get to a point where your mom and your dad can use dApps just like they're using like Facebook or Uber or Airbnb or any of these, you know, there are all these like right now there's these centralized data monopolies that are really like essentially just peer to peer services that don't need to involve like middlemen and things like that. So, but at the same time, I don't think anybody's going to care about them until the process is like seamless. So that's where we're trying to come in is where we're trying to make it so you know, you're deal when you're dealing with these dApps, you're just gonna deal with it like you're dealing with like 
Amazon or Uber or Airbnb or anything like that, where it's just such a seamless and smooth process. You don't have to pay every time you like do anything in the app. You could just pay once, link up your credit card, something like that. And then you're just using the app like you're using Amazon. So until it gets to that point, we're not going to see mainstream adoption. But once we get to that point, then the mainstream will be all over it. Do you have any uh, projections on a, a timeline of something like that? Um, I've been saying that this year is going to be a big year because this year, I think, you know, a lot of the projects are going to start to come out. Like last year was a big like year for ICOs and things like that. So people were getting money. Now it's up to the, these companies to actually start delivering their products. And, you know, I think looking at a lot of their timelines, a lot of them are, are targeting, you know, later half of this year, early next year, things like that to like really go live. So I think we'll start to see some of these more high profile projects coming out and, you know, delivering things and, you know, shipping good stuff. So that's what I'm excited to see. And, you know, that'll coincide with some of the Ethereum protocol improvements, like sharding is around the corner, Plasma, of course, state channels, what we're working on, you know, once that gets more widespread, I think it'll be, it'll be really uh, strong for the future of Ethereum. Do you uh, maybe want to touch on those other things that you mentioned, you know, sharding and plasma in case people aren't familiar with what those are and, and what that means for Ethereum? Yeah, totally. So sharding is kind of like a protocol level enhancement that basically like right now, every node on the Ethereum network needs to store the state of the entire network. So that's, you know, obviously that's better for like redundancy and decentralization because every node has a copy. So it does it does. There's no single point of failure. But it's it's inefficient because every node needs to have everything. So sharding is kind of a way to offload transactions between different nodes. So different nodes can be in charge of different parts of the chain and confirm different parts of the transactions. And uh, Plasma is kind of like a, a really cool thing where it's like a network of side chains that all operate trustlessly. But so you can essentially offload some of the transaction work onto different side chains chains that without having to talk to the main chain so again you could do some of the similar stuff to state channels like reduce fees and and reduce confirmation times and things like that so what would be an example of like a side chain so like a side chain a difference between a side chain like a state channel because i explained like a state channel is uh between two people it's off chain and it's it's kind of like transactions going back and forth a side chain is kind of like that, but but it also has a consensus mechanism because the whole value of blockchains is is this consensus mechanism where you can trust that all the the kind of transactions and values on chain are trustworthy because a bunch of people have decided that it is by like some objective measure. So side chains kind of are going to integrate some of these consensus mechanisms off chain. So they'll have the off-chain value of not clogging up the main network, but still have the on-chain consensus mechanism. So it's kind of, you know, it'll be like this world where you'll have this sort of mesh of all these like different side chains that, have, you know, each dApp might have its own side chain. And then within that side chain might have its own state channels within the side chain. So then you're just having all these like crazy levels of like optimization where things are really only used for what they need to be used for and the blockchain in general the main blockchain is only used as like a very top level like settlement layer you know it can almost be thought of like a supreme court system and like the supreme court is the blockchain and then you have all these like lower courts before that are handling stuff themselves you know sure that's, that's a great analogy i like that <laughs> So where can we uh, find your projects on the web? Yeah, so right now we, we kind of have a couple landing pages up, connects.network and ethicalaid.network. Um, but right now I think the best thing to do is follow our like Medium blog. So we have medium.com slash connects. So that's where we're kind of like pushing out our latest updates, our Twitter account. Um, I would say those are kind of the best for right now. Like we'll we'll be pushing stuff on GitHub, NPM, and all that stuff very shortly to actually find the code and and actually start integrating stuff. But you know, follow our blog for the latest updates. Cool. Yeah, and I'll put links to those down in the description below. Awesome. Um, so, do you have anything? Um, you know, we talked a little bit about you know you mentioned 2018 being a big year for a lot of this stuff is there anything exciting on your all's roadmap that you're free to share with us 
Yeah, totally. So yeah, over the past couple of days, I mean, just yesterday, we kind of released our initial NPM package and our initial sort of off-chain hub. So we're planning to push out a little tutorial and a little test dApp within the next couple of days so people can actually see how to integrate ethically into their own dApps and then they can play with our dApp to actually see how it works. So we're going to have that coming up very shortly. Cool. I'll be sure to keep a lookout for that. Definitely. Um, okay, Raul, that was uh, very informative, very uh, interesting, man. I really like that. That's um, very good explanations about all those things as well. Um, before we wrap up the interview portion of our call here, is there anything else that you'd like for the people watching to know? Um, no, I had a great time talking to you and everything like that. And, you know, for all the, the DAP developers out there, I just like urge them to, you know, it's easy to just want to like ship things very quickly. So you just kind of take the, the easiest route, which would be like, you know, just write everything on chain, just do all the on chain transactions. But like, you know, really, I think you, sh you guys should try to take a, a look at some of the different ways that you can approach it with more off chain stuff. And that's that's really, I think, where dApps need to evolve to is moving most of the work off chain and just use the blockchain as a settlement layer because that's the only way they'll work like normal apps. So, you know, right. dApps developers keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Raul, it's been a pleasure chatting. Um, I hope everyone else enjoyed this as much as I did. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more interviews about uh, developing decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain. And until then, thanks for watching DAP University. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Greg.